Hi there, we recently filmed a video about Parallels 18 on an M1 MacBook Pro, but I wanted to film a video today and going over Parallels itself. So this is Parallels 18, as you can see, um, basically you've got a couple of systems already set here, Windows 11, the buff Windows 11 actually, and then Kali Linux. So for instance, if you have Parallels downloaded, now what I want to do is, I'll just show you first off if we were to install. Now, what's good here is, you can actually download straight from tar Parallels or use an ISO file. So if you've got uh, free systems like Linux, you can download straight off or use Mac, Mac Recovery to get that going. Or if you've got, actually got an ISO file, file downloaded, it will scan the hard drive for one. So these are a couple we've got here. But if you were to install Windows 11, for instance, the latest operating system from, from Microsoft, you can actually just go and you can configure it straight up. You can actually download it straight off. Now it will by default uh, install home, but if you want to change that, you can click choose edition and then choose what you want to do there. So if we want to go for the pro version, now you will need a license for that. So, and you can get that online or if you want to contact us, hamiltonsystems.co.uk, we can help you with that as well. So if you want to click install windows it will actually request the installation files and begin installing now it does need to download the, the files first so it's just going to quickly start doing that and it's got going if you see here there's some at the bottom here you can see it's swirling because it's in the process of installing I do find that actually the installation process is, ends up being quicker than if you into, install it on a normal Windows PC. So as you can see, it's just installing. The, it's got all the files it needs, so now it's going through the installation process. What I'll do is I'll skip this and come back to it as it's finished. Right, the installation is actually finished, it's just quickly rebooting now. And as you can see, it's starting up for the first time. I'm going to be showing you a few different things that you can do with this as well, so you wait for that to get ready. So Windows 11 is now completed, and um, we're going to click accept here. And the license terms you can read them if you want but it is just standard stuff and there you go it's successfully installed and you will notice that I didn't really have to uh, enter any login information because it picked it up from the account and it created it as a local account if you want to install Windows properly from an actual machine it would want you to set up an account and you link it to a Microsoft account so updates haven't been done yet, but it does pick up a recent copy. So you can see Windows 11 is done now. Uh, so what I want you to show you is a few different things. Now, this is Windows 11. Now, at the moment, we're not in full screen mode. You can have full screen or coher in coherence mode. Now, coherence mode is good, but it does take a bit of getting used to because what that does is it, it will place your applications side by side with the Mac applications. So for instance, I haven't really installed anything on here because I've just set it up. But if I close this down, so I'm going to show you something actually. So what it does is it's got a feature called suspend mode. So if you want to quickly get back to Windows, you can. So if we click suspend, you see the little swirling. That'll, that indicates it's going to suspend mode. So it's finished already. So I'll just demonstrate. If you actually want to resume it, you can click it. And it resumes pretty quickly. There you go. So I'm just going to quickly close that and then open up another computer system that I've set up recently. So what I wanted to show you first is some settings options that you do have. So you may want to quickly configure the settings. So if we go here, I'm going to show you that. So if you the little cog here, if you press that, and what you've got an option of is basically 
you can reclaim disk so it, let's say it's taking up too much space if there's an option to reclaim it will be here it says reclaimable at the moment nothing is reclaimable but sometimes there is now you can automatically configure your setting uh, for different environments so software development productivity testing card games don't really recommend games on here but you, it is possible you can do it but i'm not a big fan of playing the games through this so if you go to options, you do have an option here, how it behaves when it starts up and shuts down. So you can get it to come to the last view or you can choose the different options. Now, optimization is quite important. That's about resources between your computer and the Windows side. So at one point it was going quite slow and I was using, I didn't realize that actually what happened is it went into low resource usage. It was, it had switched itself. So you make sure it's on no limit and then you can give it the resources you need. Now sharing that is preferable if you want to keep Windows and Mac completely separate. Let's say for instance you were using something heavy on Windows and you did happen to get a ransomware situation encrypting your files, that you wouldn't want to be affecting your Mac side. So you can choose not to have them together. You can completely separate them if you want. Um, so. Here you've got different ways of applications. So if you want to share them, have them in the dock. So at the bottom, you can have the Windows application show up in the dock too, if you want. And um, full screen mode, you can have, if you've got more than one display, you can make it use all the displays or just one. A picture in picture, obviously, which basically is a smaller window, but I, I don't really use that picture in picture. Uh, web and email, you can choose to have it. Basically, so you open email and internet sites within the Mac or uh, on the Windows side. Now, if you were worried about viruses and things like that, you could choose to have them open in the Mac side. So that way you kept it separate. So maintenance is if there's like downloading updates and things like that, you can set a window and then you can have it do it. Travel mode just uses a little bit less power. Um, I don't tend to use it because of the M1 MacBook Pro, but you can choose to use it there, which basically just means the little best power available to Windows, but it will help you with battery life when you're on the go there. And then you, with more options, you can sync, choose to sync formatting and yeah, your clipboard, whether it's co completely separate or whether you can do it. So when we get onto hardware, now here they do recommend, Parallels recommends to keep it onto automatic, but if you have an issue or you need to throw more power at it, you could add more. So as you here, see here, they recommend four CPUs, six gig of RAM, um, and then up to three gig back per graphics, but you don't really manually set that. But you can choose manual, and as you can see, you can choose um, six processors or change it to other, depending on what sort of machine you have. Then you can adjust the RAM as well, um, and that's to change it to adaptive or non-adaptive hypervisor. So I just leave it on the presets for the most part. The graphics, they used to have a slider for actually setting the amount of graphics, but now it's judged by the display itself. So best for retina, scaled, or best for external. So I've got it as best for external because it uses the full screen and it's often how I use it, so it's better like that. So I don't really mess with these settings, the mouse and keyboard. You can choose to sync your printer, change network settings. You can do, if you want to test certain environments, you can do network conditioner, so you can give it, you know, less power and that way you can test it it's good for testing certain things but i don't have that on at the moment and then you can choose to sync your camera or not or sound choose the different sound options same with bluetooth you can share bluetooth devices any other devices you got now there is a i'll show you another thing as well because there's a preferences section so uh, afterwards which we can show you so on here you've got the hard drive now the dem basically if you've got the right equipment, like any Mac with a SSD now, you've got the option with choosing different settings and trim mode, which is just to be left at default. Uh, you may not have a CD, but you can actually, so if you've got an ISO image you need to mount, you can choose to do that from here. And TPM chip, it just basically simulates the TPM chip that a lot of Windows uses. And then you can choose your boot order. So as I said, I mentioned there was the preferences. So if you go to Parallels Desktop, and then up here, you go to preferences. So on here, they've got the general, this is important about the location of the virtual machines. 
So if you don't want to store them on the local drive, let's say it will not hold that much space and you're worried about how much you can change that. And same with uh, basically if there's dock items, how it looks, so live screenshot, you can have or, or just an off icon. Now the shortcuts here, this is quite important here because for instance, control on delete on the Mac, there's no control on delete. There's a control and an alt and there's only a backspace, it's not a delete key. So what we have to do here, we use on alternative. So for instance, if you go here and you scroll down, I've got control alt and delete and I've got that map to control alt and backspace. So, and then it picks it up through the Mac. On here as well, devices. So if you connect, uh, connect external devices, it can give you an option of uh, connecting it straight up uh, and working in the virtual machine or ask you what to do or you can actually choose it just to be Mac so if you want the Windows side to ignore it. See, I use basically a mic and a webcam and if you're using Windows and you're on a Zoom session, it's best to make sure that's connected to the Mac so it doesn't actually overtake it unless you do literally need to use it within that environment. So on here as well, you can choose security so you can make you need a password to do certain things, you turn in encryption and network, you can change the settings there by I've just got a lot, a lot of it on default and then advanced mode. Now you'll see here there's toolbox and access. Now toolbox is really good, I'll show you that in a moment. Access, I don't really use that, but what that is, is you can allow it so if you've got like an iPad you can control the window side from the iPad, which is handy, but I don't tend to use it. But toolbox is, there's just a set of tools that's just amazingly helpful. So I'll show you here, so library of tools, and this is all included with the subscription there. So if you got here, so if I go to all, you can see there's lots of different options. So you can quickly do things rather than having separate devices installed, uh, you can separate applications installed, should I say, you can do it right from here. And it's so handy. So sometimes just switching resolution. So uh, basically if you, so quickly switch resolution and then you've got an option and you can choose the external display uh, or the internal display and you can just amend the resolution. You could say it's a bit smaller. You can just to get a lot more real estate. But one of the, I, I often use the, this and resizing images. So you can drag an image to there and choose the size. Um, it's just so handy to do. And basically there's just like clean drive, just have a bit of space if you're worried about how much space is going on. If you look here as well, you can see what kind of network activity, that's all part of it as well. All that is included in it. Uh, you can make record your screen, which is handy. Um, so on there, and you can do all that within it. So if we boot up the Windows 11 here, I'm going to show, show you a few different options on here. So you, as you can see, you can move it to another screen, move it to the iPad, because um, the iPad, basically you can use the iPad as an extended display as well. It's just booting up now, won't be long. Okay, so that, that's the version. So as I say, you can use it like this. You can use it full screen. So that's full screen. So you've got your start menu there. And as you see, now, good thing to note, if you see here, I scroll up, and you see the mouse goes straight past. Well, actually, what that's doing is, it's actually going to the next screen, which isn't helpful. So if you press Control and Alt when you get near the top of the screen, what that does is it means the menu will pop down and then you can see the different options. So like devices, you can get actually disconnect and reconnect devices on the fly. So if you quickly need to get access to a device like this attached, like here we've got the microphone and the webcam and it would instantly attach itself. So you can choose to do do things like that. You can do quick quick shortcut actions for the keyboard. And there are different options if you've got the settings set right. Um, you can change the display. Now I wanted to show you 
So this is currently full screen. You can exit full screen and you can use it like this. So if you've got different things, you can even drag uh, like documents straight into the desktop there. But if we switch to coherence mode, I mentioned that before. Now, as you see, you don't really see anything happen there, did you? So it wasn't obvious that that was coherence mode, but what, what you do now is if you press like the command button, then you get the Windows start menu will come up. So if you were to search for Excel, and you launch the application, you actually get the straight away you get the Excel on Windows rather than the Mac there. So you've got all the usual things. It can connect to your OneDrive if you've got set up. Um, and so this is obviously completely separate to the, the Mac side, but if you were to go to the Mac and then search for Excel, see that's the Excel on the Mac that's there. So there's the difference. Um, you can even have them running side by side if you wanted. So that's a good little option there. So I'm going to take this out of coherence mode now. It can be handy running applications side by side. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I've tried it before. But sometimes when you want to find something and it just doesn't come up and you find if you need to press command for something, it kind of get in the way when the start menu comes up and you're not expecting it. Yeah, so what we do as well is say if you've got a storage solution set up, like one of the things we use is data workplace. So if you've got that set up, on the Windows side, you can quickly ac access your files. Um, so this is just a demo area that we use to demonstrate things. Uh, so you can create, you can create files and make changes. Seamless, so it's all quite quick. Now it depends on how much resources you do give it to how quick it is. But yeah, so I'm gonna end the video here, but if you do have any questions, please reach out in the comments and thank you for all the comments from previous videos and we're going to keep making these videos so if you do have any questions any programs you want us to check out uh, check out the video here um, for our information on running Parallels 18 on the M1 MacBook Pro but thank you thank you for reaching the end of this video if you'd like this video and you want to see more content from us please hit the like and subscribe and also the bell notification which lets YouTube keep you up to date and if you want to hire us for a project, please head over to hamiltonsystems.co.uk and in the top right hand corner, you'll find a hire us button. We'd love to hear from you soon. Thank you.